So my presentation today is uh, in collaboration with one of the, the larger research institutes in Europe. We have uh, three of those, uh, Fraunhofer, we've got Cialetti and IMEC. This presentation is about collaboration with IMEC, ongoing project. And uh, we're going to go through a couple of details and the scenario we see with uh, 3D handling on 300 millimeter wafers over at IMEC. So there's three, three uh, areas I'd like to address in this talk. The first one is um, the 3D wafer handling. The second is uh, uh, handling and shipping. And the third one is intelligent high viscosity pump. Uh, there is uh, North American 3D semi standards. There are about five out there so far. Um, we haven't worked enough on standards. So that's one of our biggest concerns at the moment because we see customers coming up with different type of solutions. Um, what we want to do is try to automate it. We want to avoid any type of manual handling and every manual handling involves a risk. So the solution is trying to standardize products and work around automated solutions to avoid manual handling. Uh, the current North American committee I have published about five, they have three uh, task force, wafer bonding stacks, thin wafer handling, and inspection metrology. There is also a task force over in Japan. Um, I haven't seen anything out of Europe yet. I don't think we enough organized yet. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> um, if we go back to IMEC, the wafer specifications, which is 775 micron, uh, max 1500 micron, um, the wafers, they might have sharp edges. Um, and if you use the, uh, when once it's bonded, you might have glue covering the edges. Uh, and the carrier wafer could be silicon, or it could also be glass. Um, once the edge trim, they are very, very sensitive to dimensions and critical for wafer handling, edge gripping, and wafer carrying design. So on the next slide, you can see the sensitive areas. Here you go, one, two. Um, and these, these areas is um, affecting the edge, meaning edge cracks, micro cracks, which can then develop further through the processes. We're looking at four different profiles, bonded wafers, after thinning, with edge trim, and trimmed wafers. When we started the project with IMEC, they requested us to come up with solutions to avoid the micro cracks. They did see micro cracks on their wafers, and we wanted to figure out how can we help them to avoid seeing the issues in the future. Um, so these are some of the edge chipping that we see happening on the uh, trimmed wafers. And these has been uh, clean room transferred in a standard A300. A300 is one of our three FOOP platforms. We got the A300, we got the F300, and the Spectra FOOP. So A300 have a, a surface area where the uh, uh, wafer is contacting the cushion. So this was the area where we saw the edge cracks, because the the, the profile, the dimensions is made for standard 300 millimeter wafer thickness. So when you add uh, or change the thickness of a 3D wafer, you see micro cracks. The risk is very, very high. So what we had to do here is modify the wafer edge contact, means modify the wafer cushion. And the test run by IMEC was using two A300 FOOPs with a modified uh, door retainer design, the cushion. And we did 100 opening and closing. And we had 42 uh, FOOP transfers. And the result is there's no severe damage encountered during handling, shipping, and there's no edge defect. So this is hard to see, but this was the wafer before the testing. And this is after testing. So here 
we do not see any edge cracks at all. And iMac is very pleased with the results so far. These are the three full platforms we have, and we modified the A300, in this case, for iMac. Uh, the challenge is each customer have their own FOOP. It could be the A300, it could be a Spectra, it could be an F300. So far, only the A300 has been developed with a new cushion design. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some new versions regarding the Spectra and the F300 as well. Um, there's one, we have two steps. We have the first step, which is actually the processing. Then you also have the second step, shipping. First, you need to process the wafer, then you have to ship it. So once uh, the bid them bonded, whoops, went too far. They will be handled on uh, 300 millimeter film frames, and the thickness vary between 40 to 60 micron. And the, the challenge we see here is the manual handling of the film frames itself. So what we want to do is reduce the manual handling as much as necessary. So this is a typical scenario we see today. I'm not sure all of you have seen these. If you work in a fab with 300 millimeter wafer on frames, uh, you might well have seen this scenario. And this is something we like to avoid. We like to have it automated to avoid any variability, any, any human errors. So the current solution which they're using is um, a 13 capacity open cassette and then they manually transfer it into a multi film frame shipper which is also a 13 capacity. And here there is risk for, for thin wafer handling if you do that manually. We're currently working with a company who actually can handle this automatic. It's not in this presentation. This is a second option, a second solution. But there is an additional solution out there, which we're pursuing as well. The 300 millimeter film frame also comes in 200 millimeter as well as 150 millimeter. So some of you might not work on 300 millimeter level by 200 or even 150. So we have the, the solutions out there for two types of, of film frames. One is a conductive, one is non-conductive. Um, the 150 and 200 is a 25 capacity. The, the shipping, to ship wafers, you have first the, the film frame shipper, but second, you have a secondary packaging. The secondary packaging is vital to prevent any damage, because you design the secondary package around the film frame, around the product. We do a ISTA ship test, drop test, shock vibration, to ensure there is no damage uh, during shipment. And the test with the frames at this stage um, has worked successfully uh, for iMac when they used the E400 film frame shipper. And the next test here is going to be electrically tested wafers. So that's going to happen in Q3, Q4 of uh, this year. So what we're looking at for a complete automated solution is to add, this is the modified A300 FOOP. This is a 450, 450 FOOP. So what we do is modify the inserts for a 450 FOOP so you can automatically transfer the wafer from a 300 millimeter FOOP to 450 FOOP. So here you can see the, the modified inserts. And it's the same with the, uh, the 450. It comes with a design, special engineering designed uh, secondary packaging as well, which has to, to withstand and pass the ISTA drop test as well as shock and vibration. Uh, the advantage in this case, this is a 25 capacity. So you like to go batch to batch, 25 to 25. I think most of you don't like to split it because if you're ending up with 13, then you got 12. So what do you do with 12? You have to add another one to make 13. Uh, 
the rings, um, there's two types of rings available. Um, we're looking at the, the, uh, the molded, injection molded rings. There's also metal rings out there. Uh, injection molded rings, we're going to add RFID tags to it, low frequency RFID tags for identification. Because once the wafer goes on, a, on a, a film frame, you lose your ID. So you need to have some sort of tracking system, tracking device onto the film frame. Just short about the intelligent high viscosity pump. Um, the advantage using the high viscosity uh, intelligent pump is it's a two stage technology and um, for dispense, it's inter integrated filtration of particle bubble removal. Um, if you look outside of a two stage technology pump, you only find one stage, which means you have a very high. Uh, this uh, filtration rate, and if you use a high filtration rate, you create mi micro bubbles. So the only way to reduce micro bubbles is to reduce the rate, and you can do that here because two-stage technology, you can have a, a low filtration rate, but high dispense rate. And what we're also seeing is, um, this has large dispense volume, 20 milliliter. It worked yesterday. It worked last week and last year. We're now looking at, at 3D wafers. The 3D wafers, the topography has increased. So you need more to dispense. So that's why the request is out for 50 milliliter. And this is currently available. We're running a test with the same institute in Belgium. And they're going to test a new 50 milliliter. If that's going to be a solution for 450, could well be. So the target applications oops, is using polyimide, uh, thick resist, and 3D bonding materials. And here it's hard to see, but it's one with micro bubbles and one without micro bubbles. Um, this solution, the intelligent high viscosity pump, also saves chemicals. So the return on investment is very, very short. The period of time is very, very short. It's also remote controlled. In a sense, the operator doesn't need to go in this clean room to check the data. If upper, lower spec, where are the parameters? You can do it from his desk. So that was the, the last slide. And I'd like to thank IMEC for the collaboration and ongoing study and support. And uh, say thank you. So do we have any question for Jürgen? Yeah. Hi, I have one question regarding to, I think it was like two or three. Um, you mentioned when you were doing the thin wafer, uh, you were processing like the thin wafers, you mentioned that you used silicon and quartz. So you used quartz as handling carrier? Yeah, the bonded, yeah, the bonded, it, it's not our choice, it's the customer choice. They could choose different type of uh, bond, the, uh, uh, bonded carrier, yes. Okay, thanks. The challenge there is standards. Sometimes it might work for their application and the customer use a different type of uh, solution. Good question. Thank you. So thank you, Jorgen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jan.